Okay, we're back again, Andy G's garage. If you saw my road trip video, you know that I had an issue with the front wheel bearing on my 55 Pontiac. Now, being that it's a Canadian Pontiac, it is on a Chevy chassis. So it's basically a 55 Chevy. What I discovered while hunting through many, many parts stores, making phone calls and whatnot, and then eventually finding a used hub with uh, used bearings in it so that I could drive it another, oh, eight, nine hundred miles home, was that the old style ball bearings are no longer available. And what you need to do is do a conversion to a Timken style taper bearing which are actually shared with 61 to 68 Chevy full-size cars. Now you can use the full-size hub but here's the trick. Everyone had the bearings because the bearings are common. I think they're used for more than one than just those 61 to 68 Chevs. I think they're used on a multitude of GM vehicles. Um, these uh, Timkins. I'm going to keep the numbers off these Timkin bearings just so I know which bearings to grab. Then I'm not always asking for 61 to 68. I can cross reference. Being able to cross reference stuff is very important because then when they say, oh, well, that's too old, we don't carry that at the parts store, you can say, well, I'll try, uh, you know, 77. Nova or whatever, right? whatever it happens to cross-reference to. Um, just as a note, um, I had a 55 Ford and it was severely lowered, like just slammed right in the weeds, just static cut springs, big lowering blocks, like four or five inch lowering blocks, I forget what it was, but basically rode on the snubbers almost. Well, I would tear up U-joints all the time because I was too young and dumb at the time to realize I needed to correct the pinion angle. Anyway. But I discovered that 70s Volvo U-joints were the same. See, these manufacturers, they're not, well, we're going to design a whole new U-joint. These companies make these parts, and they have them sitting there, just like the bearings. Companies make bearings and make parts. They're standard sizes. U joints are standard sizes. They could be used in a bazillion different things, even industrial applications. When it comes to stuff like U joints and Timken bearings and everything else, they're not redesigning bearings. They just the designers and engineers say we need a bearing that can handle this load, and they spec it, and we want it this size, and then they buy them from whoever's making them whether it's SKS or Timken or whoever, any of the bearing manufacturers. They just go to them with a spec and say, we need two million of these. And the bearing manufacturer goes, oh, very good then. They're 59 cents each and here you go. So that's how that works. So don't think that, oh, well, it's this, soup, this bearing is only on a Subaru or this bearing is only works on this make a model car. No, it probably crosses over into hundreds of different applications. Anyway, so, but because the hubs weren't also available, what I did is I went online and I found through Summit, and this is not sponsored, but I order things through Summit because with orders over $300, I get free shipping to Canada. So, and I think my duty costs were only like, like I'm looking at the bill here. Clear part value for shipping, shipping, shipment charge for the duties was $19.09. Had similar stuff shipped through UPS. That, and then they want a freaking $150 brokerage fee or some BS. So that's why I almost exclusively use Summit. 
Speedway, get on board with this. If somebody can do it, you guys can do it too. There's lots of stuff I'd like to order from Speedway. Anyway. So what I got was the aluminum hub kit. I'll put a picture of it in the video here. Um, perhaps a link to it as well on Summit site. Like I said, I'm not sponsored, but the value was there. It, uh, the kit was $240.99 from Summit. Which, yeah, we'll show you here. Um, but it's uh, CPP, which is uh, a classic performance product. very nice hubs they are forged aluminum which in itself is impressive they are so light and they look so good and this kit is so complete look at that so you don't have to chase anything else down so you got it. so in here in this bag there's the seals, the dust caps. Now I've heard these dust caps don't exactly fit. Great, into the hubs. That's okay, we'll figure it out. Get the washers, castle nuts, cotter pins, uh, and, the, and the seals, the bearing seals on the hub. Comes with the bearings. Spectacular is the maker. What does it say? What do we got? LM6708. I used to do a lot of motor rebuilds and stuff, like electric stuff. I used to know these, what those numbers meant. It's a V04. AM50. So, whoever that is, I don't believe that's a Timken bearing, but it's a Timken style. It's a tapered roller. The reason we all call them Timken, Timken's a trade name, brand name like Kleenex, and we call facial tissues Kleenexes. Timken had the patent for these for the longest time. And then the outer, so this big one's the inner. This one's the outer. We got an LM11949. But yeah, they're. Looks like a very, it's a very complete and well built kit. These hubs, I can't get over how nice they are. My oldest daughter, she was out visiting, and uh, she noticed. They were delivered while she was here. And she works on exotic cars. She's a body tech, but she said she's never lifted a, felt a hub so light. And she's worked on Lambos and Ferraris and such. <laughs> so right now she's working on GTRs and other imports. Yeah. Yeah, this stuff says made in China here. Um, like everything else, yeah. Okay. Made in China, but I hate to say it, but this is a good looking product. Anyway, next step is take it outside and uh, put them on. I'll take you with me. Okay. 55 Pontiac. So the first step will be to get this thing jacked up. Actually, I'm going to turn it around so it's facing the other way in the driveway. But yeah, we'll get it jacked up and get the wheels off. Oh, well, one thing I didn't mention is if you're doing it on one that is stock and hasn't been taken apart before. The drums will be riveted to the old hubs. 
you're going to reuse the drums, you're going to have to drill out the rivets. I think mine have been drilled out both sides. Not sure. Pretty sure they have. Um, but anyway, that's what you'll have to do. Just simple drill the rivets out and then you can throw the drums over these uh, new hubs. Okay, now let's get to her. Okay. First step. Oh. Highly recommended one of these kneeling bars. Yeah, anyway. First step. Take the wheel off. I got it jacked up. Just the one that gave me a hassle. Out in BC, in Vancouver. Start rattling out the hope. And when I was putting it back together, I broke one of these wheel studs off. But new hub solved that problem too. This up the road. Screwdriver, knock that off. Okay, I'm back. Here's the handful of tools you're gonna need. Side cutters, I use that for pulling the cutter pin. Same with the pliers, screwdriver, and adjustable wrench. Yeah, get you on the tripod. And we'll get busy. Now this has been off not too long ago, but you may find that you have to adjust the uh, star wheel for the brake shoes to pull them in. To get the drum off of it, it's hard to pull off. Parts. The difference in uh, ball bearings and the Timken style rollers too is in preload. Ugh, this is gonna be messy. I'm gonna grab some rags. the old roller style bearing these are still good so I'm gonna I'll keep them somewhere in the hub maybe someone else can use it in an emergency but I would highly recommend talking about here there was rivets 
two or three rivets that, that come out. That helps. Sort of kind of pressed in. There. The drum is off. But if it hasn't been done before, we'll have to drill, drill out those three rivets. Right here. The old hub. Those were rivets. That's the broken wheel stud. I did it before because I had broken wheel studs on the old hub. I had to drill the drum off to get out the wheel studs. Because they're just easier. I believe GM only did it for a ease of assembly situation. It's for a ball bearing. Have to come off. I've had this off before. situation with the grease. <laughs> be careful not to scratch the surfaces. There. Now I'm all clean this up. So I'm gonna grab some brake clean. out of there. And thank goodness my spindle, well not perfect, there's a couple small marks, but it didn't get the snot beat right out of it when that roller bearing went on my trip. with all the hardware seals and right? so we're good now okay we'll grab the new hardware I knew I didn't buy grease I already had some so. and I had it thrown in the trunk the stuff I use for an EP2, right? It's a premium multi purpose grease. And for this, we're going to need one large and one small first. Fit. If there 
is marks in yours, you might have to hit it with some emery cloth to kind of take any marks off, and then this one's just going to sit in here, right in there like that. So you don't, you have to take that inner race off. There's still a bit of a curve there, but I don't think it's an issue. Oh, this sits on because there's a curve on this, and even inside of this bearing, there's a curve. Pack of breeze pack in time. I'll come back once I get these pat in the hub. Okay, bearings are packed. Hands are full of grease, especially. Not one of my favorite jobs to do. And I'm going to show you how to pack them because the bazillion other channels show you packing grease into the bearings. I just put a lump of grease in my hand and scrape it till the grease comes out of the bag. It's all because the taper in the hub goes towards the center. So that's what it is. The two tapers help keep the hub centered. Just going to go on this way. perfectly square and slide right on. I'm having all faith that this is going to work. change a tire you can change this the rest of the hardware oh okay already forgot something already forgot something so I'm used to using used junk to seal so the lip will go in Towards the center, I have to get a small hammer to pump this in here. Maybe not. Yep, I'll be back. Get a tap to seal in. The bearings gotta go in and in the seal. Okay, I'll be back. Give me a second. Okay, I'm back. Get that bearing off. Throw that in the hub. Then we'll put the seal in. So that seal's got to go in before the bearing, or the bearing's got to go in before the seal. There's, the dust cap seals the outside. Best not to do this with grease covered hands. Hardware. Get 
comes with castle nut. And is nice you're not having to go to the parts store for things like seals and whatnot and get the right sizes and it's nice to have get the washer that's got the tab in it for the keyway which all helps from stuff from getting unwinding that there that's holding the whole works to the car including the wheel well, this comes off because you didn't put a car pin in yeah see he's singing a kenny rogers song if i pick a fine time to leave me loose wheel and this washer goes on One thing I didn't check, and we're gonna find out here shortly, is whether or not my wheels fit over these hubs. second there I had the wrong bolt tire. Let's see that's a little more drag than that. side out. cap time. Now I've heard a lot of these, these caps don't fit. That was a complaint. So I mashed that finger the other day working on my van. Yeah, I've heard that these do not fit in here that great.
neck. The thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little relief cut on either side. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Now we're going to do this. Put a little slit on either side. Just hit with a hacksaw. We'll see if that works. Enough just enough to give. Hopefully. If I had a target big enough. Damn it. Damn it's closing up that gap. Maybe a couple more relief cuts. will be fun to get off. At least they won't fly off. Which the old style that go over top of the hub. Hence why the one on the other side is missing. Has half of it. Now I'm gonna put my lug nuts. I want to make sure these fit. And the threads are good good. Okay. Well, well. Okay, CPP's instruction, because these are, oh, the instructions apply to thread in studs. These are pushed in, but it's a forged aluminum hub. So inherently it's gonna be softer. So they say don't use impact gun. When it comes to stuff like this, Follow the instructions. You don't want to have that strip inside the hub, then the hub's no good. And you can't tighten your lug nut. Alright, and I'm gonna go find another lug nut. Again, I'll be back. Okay. Fun stop. Now I'm gonna I wanna check to see if this wheel fits first before we go any further. Should fit over that hub. There we go. Nice. Actually, it looks good too. So, a rusty, crusty hub. Now I just got a nice aluminum hub. Oh, that's the other thing. We gotta check. Oh, very interesting. Make sure these uh, wheel nuts 
lug nuts are gonna hold the wheel on before they bottom out on the stud. Sometimes if these studs are longer and you're using a closed lug nut like I'm using, they can bottom out. And these are just a chrome cover. I mean, they really were in a pinch. You could knock that cap off. You can actually see the seam. Yeah, looks like we're good. Finger tight all these on. That's it, we're basically done. But I would check to make sure they're gonna fit your wheels, whatever wheels you're using. I think they stick out a little further, so I don't know if they're... These are some kind of aftermarket wheel. If it's not a steel wheel, you may have an issue. But so far, I'm very happy. Well, it's very easy to change, very easy to do. The kit is very, very complete, which is uh, nice, very nice. Yeah, like I said, if you can change a tire, you can change these hubs. The hardest part would be if you've got still stock drums and hubs and they haven't been, it hasn't been touched then uh, you'll have to drill out those rivets. Well, I did mine with my battery drill and some bits. I mean, didn't have to go crazy. And like I said, these are gonna wanna be torqued as per the instructions. Here, look. Because now you have an aluminum hub. If you're gonna have someone else work on them, say do not use that impact gun on the wheel nuts. If you're gonna have tires changed and whatnot at a tire shop, make sure you tell them it's aluminum hubs. So 7 16 lug nuts, which these are Chevy 7 16 by 20, 70 foot pounds. So, yeah. We'll get this on the ground and uh, we'll do that. This hand tightening means so the centers the wheel. Always pay attention to that. Make sure the because there's a taper to these lug nuts. Make sure they're sitting in the wheel properly. The wheel's slightly off. Have wheels rattle loose because of that. And break lug nut or wheel studs because of that. Here. There, that's on there tight. Out of the way. Here we got my torque wrench. Basically it. So I'm just gonna torque these up to 70 foot pounds as per the instructions, and then we're good to go. That would be uh, handy to remember too, and write down somewhere or keep the instructions somewhere, a glove box or something, just so you remember. Getting old like me, and you won't remember. But anyway. Thanks for watching. Something anyone can do in their driveway. You don't need a garage. You don't need a fancy lift. You don't need a fancy hoist. I recommend doing it if you have the stock bearings because then you can get these bearings. The bearings are available because, like I said, they cross through a bunch of different applications. They're 61 to 68 uh, Chevy full size. So in Palos, Biscayne's, whatever, right? That's the conversion.
So that is that. Like I said, I'm gonna say like, share it, subscribe, and thank you very much for watching this far. If you got here to the end, fantastic. Have a great day and drive your stuff, wrench on your stuff. Even do minor stuff like this. You might not be doing engine swaps, but if you can do, if you can change a tire, you can do this. Change your oil, you can do this. It's not complicated, don't be afraid. Do it before you get stuck in the middle of nowhere with shitty wheel bearings that you can't find parts for.